loved it. My own granddaughter was with us and the videos were beautiful. The everything was just was it was it was very nice. Not from the heart where you see the teacher, but as best as we could do. Right. And I think for the kids, it's easier to adapt oh, than for easy. us old people. <laughs> That's the I mean, we do not know what we're doing, but they're they're really flexible. They're sponges and, and they get technology. Yes, very much so. so. Very uh, much for so. us it's hard. Yeah. But yeah. I, I was very pleased for the first week. Everybody was at home remote and we worked. And if parents couldn't get on, they emailed me. I gave them the numbers and whatever. We did give out the books. We gave out the books in mm -hmm. the letter. We have the parents getting the parent letter. Um, it was it was crazy the week before, but now everybody's plan put their lessons on and everything. And we kept to nine on Sunday morning okay. because that's when we go back. It's going to be the same time mm -hmm. on Sunday morning. You know. Oh, I love the way you said that. When we go back, you're alive <laughs> and hope. You're alive and hope. I mean, that's the key. Um, you know. To, but to I, I'd that. say if you don't, I'm very blessed with catechists because they're doing the work so i pray for them every day <laughs> okay oh that's good um as i mentioned we've begun working on the right of election do you know um are you going to be doing rcia this year how is that happening at a mac uh father bill is doing that he's the one in charge with deacon elkin uh, okay. they, they just went through it. They have uh, one for uh, um, acceptance into the church so far. Uh, they have two that need confirmation. They just finished the last on September 18th. They had 14 of them. They had two baptisms. Uh, they had an acceptance into the church and everybody else needed confirmation. So they're starting to go again and trying to get people you know, to come in. They don't know if it's a small group, could you socially distance, or if it's a larger group, they'll do virtual. Okay. They'll do virtual. Right. Uh, and Monsignor is handling uh, parents in my program that want to get married in the church, but then they need confirmation. So they'll be going to the Spanish RCIA to do that. Okay. But again, it's slow go it's slow going, even even signing up the low the three, third, fourth, and fifth grades. It's very low registration in those. Communion, first grade in that seem For me, it's like almost half of what I had, but we're doing the best that we can. Exactly, and you know, I think, uh, I, I always like to say it this way because it gets everyone's attention. I'm gonna use the dreaded F word, four letters, fear. <laughs> and people are still so afraid. Yes, yes. And then the news stories are so convoluted um that that parents rightly so uh, you know don't know what to do yeah. and then what what i found is we we were having a problem which we've never had before in whitestone was with the third fourth and fifth grade because if they if they don't need a sacrament well we're going to sit this one out right yes so we have a lot of those grades sitting it out which yeah. is never before been the case and I mean, I emailed people. I said, I haven't heard from you. I did that with communion and confirmation and they came back. I'm only missing like three children. But the, the uh, and we would have had a lower enrollment anyway because we had boom year last year. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the middle grades after communion, those kids aren't back. There's very few children back. Now, having said that, we all have, we also have about 180 in the program this year. Okay. That's even with the numbers being down. That's very so good. It's still a, a fairly significant program. And um, Nancy's done a great job with the online pieces. Right. But it's really, and but the other thing that goes with that, we usually average about 30 funerals a year. Mm -hmm. We had 56 this year. I know. And I kept saying in November, December, and January, We've had a lot of death with pneumonia this year, a lot of death with pneumonia. And I'm wondering now what it really was, whether because they have almost double the amount of funerals. I know it, it was one of our parishioners was very sick. Young man, young, young man in November into December. 
And when he went back to get tested, he had antibodies. It, it was it was the coronavirus, mm-hmm. and and he had no idea. But he was really really sick, and so maybe that was contributing to people with pneumonia. You know, my own father died of the flu. That was the ba- bottom line. He was 92, God bless him, and he did have COPD. Always took a flu shot, but the bottom co- the cause was t- the flu. Yeah. The flu attacked it. You know. So you got to take that flu shot. At least I believe in it. <laughs> oh, and don't forget next Wednesday, people, you can get a flu shot here. Okay. Just bring your insurance card and your. Well, yeah, you're all too young for Medicare, Medicaid. So <laughs> Not everybody. <laughs> I've got mine ready to go. I've got my card ready. Make sure you get the super duper one. <laughs> well, I went to three pharmacies to get the old person shot right they were already all out with no idea when it was coming back Mm -hmm. the doctors are running out of it too i just happened to go when he got a batch in (laughs) so so and tell them to be nice to the senior citizen yes because they're they're mean to me they're mean um Nelsa, do you, I mean, I don't think anyone else is going to log on, so it's good to see you. Um, Do you have any questions or anything for us? Me? Yeah. Um, Questions? No. No, I think um, I'm good. Um, I'm in touch with you. Tuesday we met, so I heard all the updates from my colleagues. And I reach out to them as needed. Mm -hmm. And I hope they, you know, they do reach out to me. As I said, you know, if anything I can help on my end, please reach out to me. Um, I'm more than happy to pitch in. Um, And uh, I get plenty of emails and phone calls from the DREs, and I'm happy to be able to help them. Uh, A lot of them are really anxious, stressed out. So um, I'm happy to be able to help them through those things, you know, one step at a time, listen to them and then help them make sense of what's happening. Good morning, Anna. How are you? She's muted. Nada has muted herself. Good morning. Unless she doesn't have a mic. Was that Nadia? Yeah. I had a question on the updates. When we went to click on from you, the school evangelization, it didn't come up. You know that. I'm sure you know that already. Right. Yes. Go ahead, Christine. Uh, We did send out an email where I explained that there was an issue, and so I attached Nelsa's link, and I wrote if there's any issues to contact Nelsa. That email went out immediately, like I would say 20 minutes, half hour after the weekly update. See, now, there are some times we don't get that, even with Carmen Macchio. She said, you got it, I didn't get it, and even on... Emails, you mean? You're not getting the emails? The emails, the, emails, the last email from last week was the weekly update and something mm-hmm. from uh, uh, Goretti, and that was the last one I got. The only thing I could suggest is refreshing because Outlook okay. is web-based, so maybe clear your cookies, refresh, log okay, back thank in. thank you. I will, I will. Yeah. A few other persons contacted me also yes. that they never got Christine's email. I know she sent it. I got it. I was grateful she was able to do that so quickly. So uh, I don't know what's happening. With the web based the only one, you know. Sorry? I, I said, said I wasn't the only one, Nelson. That no, did. no. A few other people reached out to me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just think the web base is the is, is part of the issue. It probably needs to be refreshed. Maybe okay. the the half circle button at the top left hand corner okay. of the browser, you know, will refresh the page. It might log you out depending on how your settings are, um, or it might just refresh the page and you could see the new. I do know that it runs a little bit more slower than the app one. Um, I don't know if you can download the actual app 
and use those credentials instead of the cloud. Okay. So you might try you. that. Maybe try downloading Outlook app itself. I have it on my iPad, the app. Yeah, Check so the app might be a little bit uh, better connectivity than the cloud. Okay. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. Let us know if that works for you. Then we can just tell everybody, hey, download the app instead okay. of using the I can just, browser. I can just look right now. I didn't trust the camera for the first time, so I brought my iPad just to check it here. I can't unmute Nada, so I. <laughs> OK, I have a weekly update reminder from um, last Friday's weekly update. OK, I got that now. All right, so that came up. I'm going to check this one. It's the iPad first. Yeah, I think the I think the app works better than the than the okay. cloud. Thank you. I'll double check that. No. Nadia, how are you doing? Can you unmute yourself? Christian, do you have any update that you might want to share? Yes, Father. So uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, so I uploaded all of the uh, family life, well, the family catechesis or family life um, training updates uh, from Loyola Press and RCL. They're both up on our YouTube channel. So um, if you simply go to YouTube and type in um, SEC evangelization. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell that's next to subscribe so you can get um, updates um, anytime that we put up a new video or a new training session so that uh, you are up to date with all of the um, videos that we put up and it goes straight to your uh, your email address. Um, so if you wanted to share the um, the training sessions with your catechist, you, you're more than happy to do that. You can just simply click on share, copy the URL and send it directly to your catechist and it's public. Um, so so they don't have to put in a special password or anything and they could just simply see it on their phone on the iPad or the computer um, and um, get the update uh, or of how to use either Loyola Press's Growing with God or RCL Benzinger's Family Life program for grades five through eight. Okay. Uh, Lucia, have you got anything for everybody? Um, the staff heard this before, but um, Nada and I'm sorry, I don't know your name at Immaculate Conception. Uh, no. Have it. No. Um, November 21st, we'll be hosting our fall Brooklyn Queens Catholic Youth Day. It's okay. going to be on YouTube again um, from 1145 is our countdown to uh, one o'clock. We just sent out the flyer. I believe Christine is going to send it out tomorrow with the the weekly announcements, so you'll be receiving that as well. You're more than welcome to invite your junior high school and high school age youth. I know for our spring one, uh, DREs used it as their confirmation retreat since they were um, stuck at home <laughs> during that time. Uh, but you're more than welcome to have anyone, uh, family, other uh, young adults. But it's for junior high and high school. Our theme is unity and oneness during this time of um, divisiveness happening. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to email me. And um, I, I asked the staff if you're more, you're more than welcome to join us as well as the DREs. Um, the committee is for our last one, we, did, we fasted every Friday. Um, in preparation for the event this year, this time we are doing weekly rosaries for our youth and for October and then in November we are going to fast 
on whatever we choose, whether it's like social media or food, um, offering prayers, things like that. So if you wish to join us, I will be doing it every Wednesday. Um, but if you know you want to join, do it on your own. Uh, it's for our young people and so the message can get across. In addition to that, we have monthly trainings. I know um, in Astoria, your youth minister just started with us, Angelica. Angelica Martinez, yes. Yeah, she so was she, a she, with me also, so she's. I was just going to ask you, would she? She would be getting this, right? Because I just she, spoke she, about yeah, it. Yeah, she received it already. I sent Good. it out yesterday. And she has um, a large group. She has a large group because of our altar services. A large. Oh, group. Great. Yeah. yeah. So we also have trainings for youth ministry. Um, today we have one after this with Ansel Augustine um, to talk about a, a continuation on racism, uh, which we started our conversation a few months ago with uh, Father Cox. So we are going to continue that conversation. And every month we have two trainings, one in the afternoon, one in the evening for the youth ministers. If you're interested, you can always email me and I'm more than happy to provide that information. I am going to provide, I will give it to my seventh and confirmation class the flyer when I get it yeah no problem thank you so much I, appreciate yeah. it. I didn't take advantage the last time but I'd like to take advantage yeah of and we're actually sub we're asking our young people to submit videos so we are asking them to do two the youth ministers know this um one video where they're saying phrases I'm not going to spoil why but you'll see the day of three different phrases um we want them to be recorded saying um, I am a child, son or daughter of God. We are the church and another one that I cannot remember right now. Mm -hmm. And the second video is one where they display their talent. Um, we And there's another reason why, whether it's like doing poetry, reciting poetry, doing, you know, showing their artwork or a dance or singing. Um, but it has to be less than a minute. We're looking for like 30 seconds mo mostly. Um, so that Angelica will also, she should have received that information. If you have any youth uh, that are, you know, open to sharing that, we would love it. We just need the consent form, which is also in the email. Right, because you have to. Mm -hmm. Lucia, did the Catholic academies and parish schools, will they get that flyer also? I don't have their contact, or maybe I, I'm not used to sending it to them. So I, I can. I got I can it. I can. It, I got it. If you forward me the email, Lucy, I can send it to all the principals. I think you did. You receive it yesterday. I thought I see some there. Oh, maybe I did. Okay. I, no. If you didn't, just let me know. Um, but I, I see. I try to make sure I see see everyone in the office at least. One of the the mandates that Bishop has given to Tom Chadzuko and myself is to really begin a collaborative partnership between our two educational offices, but also among the parish staffs with the principals and the DREs. Mm -hmm. So that's really one of Tom and I who have known each other for over 30 years and have worked together for longer than I'll admit. I was only four when I first met Tom. Um, we really are trying to, to foster a collaboration. And I think in the youth ministry area, especially the junior high, it's such a great opportunity yeah. for, for us as Catholic educators to all be together. Whether our specialty is English language or faith formation, it's still our Catholic education together. Uh, Ms. Joanne, you got anything? Uh, just encouraging. Um, we understand that we're we're used to offering such large and great events that we have had in the past um, that our catechists and our DREs have been able to fulfill their hours with their credit hours, but um, we're not able to do that. So we really encourage you to go to bqonlineformation.org and to look at the courses that we have. Um, to check uh, Twitter and Facebook. Christine puts um, updates there all the time of the latest courses that we're offering through CDU. Um, we have a code that you can use to take some of these formation courses, um, but also through um, what we normally would have used through My Catholic Faith Delivered. They have a lot of great um, formation courses 
um, and once you start these, you know, you have a year to complete them. So really, um, I know everything is overwhelming right now. I know there's there the the people at the parishes. You're doing a lot. Um, we're grateful for all the work that you're doing to continue faith formation because it's really important. And we're not letting this pandemic stop us from allowing people to go deeper in the faith. But also, you know, when they have those moments, um, if, if they just listen, you know, a little bit at a time so that they can be enriched, so that they can be fed, so that they can uh, give um, more, you know, as we, we know the old cliche, but it's not really a cliche, it's a reality. You can't give what you don't have. So having those opportunities to be able to be formed in the faith and going deeper. Um, we will be looking in the, hopefully the near future to add more electives and more uh, and just different um, options for people who have been with us for so long and they've taken everything. And so they're just like, what else can I possibly take? I've taken all of them. So we're looking to that. Um, and I will be sending out information um, um, you might recall that we had the Catechetical Institute of Franciscan University here about uh, almost two years ago. Um, they have monthly um, subscriptions, but they also have, I believe, if a parish subscribes for $300 for the year, then you have access to all of these courses that they offer. Um, their courses are usually broken up into 10 minute segments, and so you watch for 10 minutes you do a practicum, you go to the next segment, 10 minutes, you do a practicum. And so it probably will last you only an hour of what you're watching and probably another hour's worth of your practicum. And we would be willing to give you your catechists and as well as yourselves credit for this. There are courses in English and in Spanish. Majority of them are in English, but there's quite a few in Spanish that are very specific, uh, for example, to the Kerygma. Um, in English, they have three of them alone that break up um, looking at the catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, they're engaging, they're from experts. Um, and so uh, just something that I'm going to offer as well that can be done online. Um, and basically just know that we do pray for you all um, and we're here for you. Christian and myself are willing to come out to your parish to offer any assistance, whether that's tech assistance or, you know, looking at some tips with Microsoft Teams or just any other way that we can be supportive to you, please just uh, let us know, reach out to us. Um, we've been visiting various parishes and it's been a wonderful experience to be able to walk with you during this difficult time um, and physically just coming out and, and helping you with things that are kind of challenging to explain over the phone. This way we can show you things and make your job, um, your ministry easier. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. Miss Christine, words of wisdom about what we should be doing? Uh, well, right now what we have going on other than LLF and any other type of training that Christian has put out in BCYD mostly is the parishes that have now forfeited whatever devices they registered for in June. We're now moving forward into the next phase of giving it to the parishes that were on wait lists that they didn't think. Ahead, thinking that they would need the devices because we were all hopeful that we'd be back in the buildings and this would be way behind us and seems to be way ahead of us. <laughs> so um, I started reaching out that I'm working with Gina, um, trying to figure out how to, you know, pretty much give her all her logistics um, per parish since everything is going to be a little bit more customizable is taking a lot of back and forth between screens. There is nothing else that I could say. I would hope that they're doing their, their classes and I hope that some of these, the DREs are, you know, focusing with the catechists, if not on LLF, at least on the professionalism of how to sign into Teams, how to do a meeting, how to share a screen. I mean, it's difficult for all of us. I still share the wrong screen when I go to share. You know, it's like I still click on the wrong little thing. But practice makes perfect. And I think 
whether we like it or not, we are all pushed into the digital age. And just to, to follow up with what Christine just said, we're planning six webinars. <clears throat> Two of them are going to be just purely technology webinars um, on, on really how to, what the equipment needs to, how to use it. The other four are going to be more catechetical development webinars. How to use the technology in the catechetical sense, how to prepare classes, how to envision them, how to actually share learning with this resource. So um, we're currently working on getting those dates with the sales media and IT for the two technological pieces. And we've begun discussing and we'll continue to discuss the four more or less catechetical. Hopefully they will be up by November. So um, while I've got the team here, don't forget we have a staff meeting Tuesday, one o'clock. This is one of the priority items for our agenda. Okay. Any other questions, comments, criticisms? This is being taped. So please let um, Christine will send out an email reminding everyone that this is taped. People can log on to get the information at their convenience. All of these for all of our deanery meetings will be taped and available. So please encourage your colleagues to just take a few minutes and and tune in. Everyone have a very blessed day. It's always a pleasure to see you. Please give Monsignor and Father Bill my best. Thank you. Thank you. Say hello to everyone for me. I will. I will. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.